Okay, so let's talk about how to manage some of this crackly and stuff. I've got my base color down and it's dry. I'm going to put my crackle medium, and you want to apply crackle medium just nice and thin, and wherever you put it, it's going to crack. So you need to make sure that you're not putting it every, whoops, everywhere. Got a big old mess on my painting table there. So if you want cracks that are random, then you put them in like the streaks and stuff like that. If you want big old swaths of cracks, and then you put it like that. So you decide where the cracks need to be. You definitely don't want this. You don't want to be like, yay, here's a circle of crackle medium because it's going to crack in that circle. You want to kind of drag it out a little bit more and allow it to be more natural looking. And then even kind of feather it so that you, the crackle medium only tells the paint to crack. It doesn't tell it how thick to crack. When you apply heavy paint on top of the crackle medium, that tells the crackle medium cracks it heavy. If you apply thin paint on top of the crackle medium, the crackle tells the paint to crack thin. Okay, so it's how thick you put the paint. So make sure that this is pretty when you're doing it. And you can always put another layer of crackle on top if you mess this part up. Okay, so to get the chipping, and this is what I mean about these containers, you want to, I almost would just empty another container, um, an eight ounce container and start over. This is um, very difficult. I've got mine just resting on top, and I've actually tried really hard not to make it messy. So I have two products. I've got petroleum jelly, and I've got um, Clapham's beeswax. I prefer the beeswax, but the petroleum jelly does a different kind of technique. So what you do, if you want paint to chip, this is for the chipping paint, then you put the petroleum jelly here and there, wherever you want it. And it just seems to maybe do it a little bit lighter than I want it. I want heavier cracks. So then I go into the, the beeswax. And it's the beeswax seems to kind of stay put a little bit better. Okay, you could streak in two or three colors. I could have some brown in this and some gray in this. You could have all kinds of things. Love painting these kinds of backgrounds. Love, love, love. Okay, so then we're going to go into our top. We need our crackle medium to be dry, so I'm going to go ahead and let that dry for a minute. All right, going to, I'm going to pick this area right here, and I'm going to do really, really, really light paint. Okay, the other thing you need to know about crackle is it cracks in the direction of your brush strokes. So if I slip slap, it'll kind of hazy crackle. If I go in one direction, it'll crack in that direction. If I go across, it'll, it'll do that direction. Then I'm going to do the rest of the board in really, really, really heavy. So I'm really going to glob on my paint. And then I notice my brush is almost laying down. Okay, so I want to really just lay the paint on there. And the new, um, this new paint actually does a really awesome job of leveling. Okay, so just go ahead. I don't want to go back over that area because I really want those cracks to be um, to show you the difference in the crackle. Look at how well the red covers. I've never seen a red paint that covers this well. Normally red paints are very, very um, transparent. Okay, so I've got my chips over there. All right, I'll let that dry, and I'll be back. Okay, let's get you in close to our little sample board. Oops, got to point the remote at the camera. Okay, so you can see this is the area that had really fine, and it's got little cracks, but it's not really, really good. Okay, and then this is heavy, but see, I could have faded this just a little bit more so it wasn't so sudden on this line. That would have been nicer. Okay, and now I'll show you how to crack off this stuff. So you heat it with your blow dryer. I'm going to do this off camera and get everything kind of nice and warm. Okay, I've warmed it up just a little bit. And now this is our, um, uh, what do you call it? Vaseline or petroleum jelly. And then you just wipe off where you want things to crack. And that's how you get your cracks. And then what I like to do is spray it with a little bit of like orange cleaner or something to get rid of the greasy stuff before I start painting. And then these are our wax okay and then you can even take a little bit of your palette knife and kind of scratch at it a little bit too to make it just a little bit kind of funkier and funner okay 
Okay, so that is how you get some cracks in two different ways and how to use the chalky paint. When you look at this guy, this was done with a stencil, I think we talked about that already. Notice how very thick that is. It's still a little bit lumpy even, but it is, that's how you get that really, really big crack. And then I just shaded to create a board look and then I've got, you know, old rustic barnwood looking stuff. And then if you can see right here, let me see, yeah, right there. Okay, you can see there, that is crackle on crackle. So that's red crack on red. So after I did one coat, I went back and did some more so that I didn't have just these patches of the brown. I wanted patches of more texture.